Hello, I'm Mark Heisinger. I'm a conservation easement specialist working for Ducks Unlimited. Ducks Unlimited and the Fish and Wildlife Service have formed a partnership to protect and promote grassland and wetland um, habitats. The grassland and wetland protection is in the form of perpetual easements. I'll briefly try to explain both of those easements. The wetland easement prevents any burning of wetland vegetation, filling of wetlands with rocks or trees or manure or, or um, dirt, and it also prevents the draining or tiling of any of the identified wetlands. All other activities, including farming, haying, and grazing are allowed. Many refer the wetland easement as a water easement, although not all wetlands have water in them year-round or throughout the year. The wetland easement is a standalone easement. The grassland easement, sometimes referred to as a pasture easement, prevents any cropping, limits haying until July 16th annually, but allows for unrestricted grazing. Dugout cleanouts, water pipelines, and tanks can be accomplished through a very simple permit process administered from the Lake Andes Refuge Office. Wind turbines on the land are also possible, but require coordination with the energy company and a more detailed permit. If the land has never had a cropping history, i.e. native prairie, the land would not be eligible for food plots or shelter belts. In these cases, we try to exclude five or 10 acres from the easement area to allow for those uses. CRP land is um, available um, for landowners and the landowners would continue to get their payments until the end of the contract. However, land would not be eligible to be re-enrolled after the CRP contract expires. As a general rule of thumb, our minimum size is 80 acres unless it is adjacent to an existing grassland easement, federal waterfowl production area, or state game production area. It also must be legally describable. Both of these easements are perpetual, meaning they transfer from landowner to landowner as the land is sold or passed on to future generations. I tell people they go on for the life of the land. Unlike the wetland easement, which can stand alone, the grassland easement must have a wetland easement. In, in other words, the land must already have a wetland easement on the property, or the landowner would need to sell a wetland easement along with a grassland easement. Landowners retain ownership of the land, control subsurface mineral rights such as gra gravel, and control all public access, including hunting. Landowners continue to be responsible for any noxious weed control and taxes. Not all lands will qualify for the easements. We have a map that was developed by the Fish and Wildlife Service which depicts priority zones. Those zones are listed as priority ones, twos, threes, or no priority at all. Certain areas within Douglas County, Charles Mix, Davison, Hanson, Aurora, and Brule have the greatest number of priority one areas. Money to fund these easements are derived from the sale of federal migratory bird stamps, more commonly called duck stamps. Some additional money is generated from the sale of imported firearms and ammunition. None of the money is taxpayer funded. Landowners who willingly agree to sell these rights receive a one-time payment. The payment is not considered federal income, but could be considered capital gains. We always encourage anyone who receives an easement offer to consult with their tax advisors, bankers, and family members before signing the documents. The easement payments vary somewhat by county depending on land prices. As land prices have increased, so have the easement payments. As a ballpark figure, currently landowners can see payments for a combination of a wetland and grassland easement to be around $750 an acre, plus or minus, depending on the county. If you're interested in, these, in any of these programs, please contact me at 605-487-7603 or my cell phone, 605-481-1298. Um, you will need to provide the legal description of the land so that we can determine what the priority rating of your property would be. After, it, after we get together and inspect the property, we fill out a form, attach a map identifying the wetlands, 
and the grassland boundaries and submit them to the Fish and Wildlife Service Realty Office in Huron. It is this office that determines the amount of the easement offer. You are under absolutely no obligations until you see what the offer would be and sign the document. I always encourage people to find out what their offer is and then decide. It costs you nothing. <coughs> it is considered a continuous sign-up program, but because of the popularity of the program, we currently have about a three to six year backlog of landowners waiting for an offer. Remember, you are under no obligation to initiate this process. Thank you, and I hope to hear from you.